Hello and welcome to the Love, Listen, Talk, Repeat podcast. I'm Wendy Capewell, your podcast host, as well as being a counsellor and psychotherapist, author and speaker. In each of these podcast episodes, I'll be joined by various guests, sharing their expertise and experiences on different subjects. So let's get on with this week's show. I'd like to welcome Latoya Thompson today, and she's from Australia. Uh, one of my, yes, I visited there three over three years ago, and I fell in love with the country, having believed I'd never want to go there. It was never on my bucket list, but it was an amazing, it's just an amazing place, and uh, I'm so sad that I can't go back yet in the moment. Um, but I met Latoya, and she is the author of Beauty in the Darkness. She's also a single mum to four children. She's been a wife, an ex-wife, a stylist, beautician, she's a friend, a daughter, an enemy and a victim. And I think that that is such a, an open way of introducing anybody, yourself to anybody because so many people would not want that vulnerability to be had that about them um so but you are very very open Latoya and we've had chatted before so I'm going to hand over to you and please introduce yourself and tell us more about you yeah so um the ever I like to call it the the ever evolving introduction because I feel like we're always as humans growing and changing and um unapologetically releasing things and but yeah like you said I'm um, a woman a mother a single mom to four beautiful kids I have been a beauty therapist and a wedding stylist and now and my um, long awaited dream of becoming an author so I've finally written my book um, where to start wow I I guess I uh, will start talking about why I've um, written Beauty in the Darkness. And that was, I grew up um, feeling really lost. I, and um, like I never fit in. I didn't know who I was. I didn't trust myself. I was so disconnected. Um, yeah. And it was really uh, confronting and lonely and, I kind of went through life living in a um, detrimental survival mode. Um, Yeah, so I guess my path has been, it got, you know, like I obviously like many people had challenges and and struggles and all the rest of it. Um, Starting, I guess, from when I was born, I never connected to my mom. We didn't really have a loving um, exchange or relationship. She, um, I grew up craving that so deeply though and yeah. just wanting to be accepted and to feel loved from her. Um, and as you can imagine, as a, a young child and that's you kind of like, well, your foundation and not having that, you do start to question yourself and um, there isn't much of a self-worth because it does become dependent upon the opinions or acceptance or love of somebody else. Of course. And we so crave that a love and acceptance from a parent. That, we do. that child needs that, don't they, so badly. So Absolutely. I imagine... I, I remember myself just thinking, why am I so unlovable? Yeah, yeah, you do. You want, and then you try and change or adapt or um, conform to something that you feel is going to be accepted or loved or um, heard, I, I guess. Ooh. And it just, it starts such a ripple of um, like inner turmoil and self doubt and a really low self esteem and self worth. And you don't even realize it at the time. You wouldn't even begin to comprehend those types of things as a child, really. No, definitely uh, not. You just think that's the normal, don't you? You know, well, that's yeah. obviously that that's that's how life is. So you can't yeah. figure out why. Um, yeah. But everybody else around you seems to be okay. But I, I, 
I don't know about you, but I thought I was on the outside of everything. Yeah, you do, yeah. And you do, you sit there and you wonder what's wrong with you and why you don't fit or why um, you can't find your place. Or And it does, it becomes like an internal battle of self and um, we really start to... I guess it's like an, it is, it's an abandonment of self at such a young age. And from there, all of your relationships then start to mirror that. Um, and you, you subconsciously call that in. And that's where I went. Um, I always had this visualization my, in my head from a little child that once I find my husband or my man and have kids, then then I'll fit, then I'll find my happy family, then I'll have a place. Um, And it it wasn't the case. I was attracting these people that were really, I guess, mirroring what I needed to work on within myself. Um, So that led to like abusive relationships or controlling relationships, Mm -hmm. um, relationships that didn't truly see me or get to know who I was it was purely at a face value or um or what they wanted me to be um yeah and it it led me through some pretty dark paths and to be honest I got to a point three years ago or no two years ago now where I sat there and I hated myself so much that I turned to self-harm um And I remember that very night and just repeating to myself over and over, like, no wonder nobody loves you. Look at you. Like, what are you? And it was in that spot that I thought, what the, like, what is going on? What, why is my life like this? Why do I repeatedly call in these people and find myself in these situations where I'm being hurt or ignored or invalidated or not accepted? Um, yeah, so it was a confronting time and I really had to sit and, um, I call it face the mirror because that's exactly what it was. Yeah. You know that, um, and work out, okay, these people are here to teach me something and I'm clearly missing the picture because it, it's happening over and over and over. And when I really sat with it and I started saying, okay, well, this is what I didn't like. I didn't like how he did this to me or I didn't like how he made me feel. If I sat there and removed a few layers, I was like, well, I actually do that to myself or I feel that way about myself Um, and realised that I was merely just attracting what I was energetically putting out there, Um, even in the abusive relationships. You know, I subconsciously would abuse myself every time I looked in that mirror and I would pick apart my body or, you know, I would ignore myself and not accept myself every time I tried to conform to somebody else's opinion or would Ooh. silence my voice and my truth. And it's confronting and it's horrible to realize that you had been at the core reason of all of this past trauma and pain and suffering. And um, it really came down to ways in which I needed to love myself more. Wow. So that must have been quite a, a difficult time, actually, as you say, looking in the mirror yeah. and, and kind of taking off taking off that kind of, I can't find the words right now, but it is just removing the shield that was there or the, or the, or the what was there yeah it back isn't it it's it's almost as though there was a veil over the mirror that's what I was looking for the word and just removing that can be quite um challenging yeah and just finding that acceptance of wow I've never really known unconditional love even the love upon myself and the love I've received has always been conditional and it took some really brutal um lessons from the universe for me to sit there and go oh okay I'm listening now like Mm. um with my fourth son during my pregnancy I was horrifically sick and I ended up being hospitalized on and off for the entire nine months um they put me on some really heavy medication to keep food and fluid within my body and keep Bubby alive And that had me going, um, I know it's different 
um, weight measures where you are. But basically mm. in Australia, I started my pregnancy at 57 kilos. Um, mm -hmm. And when I gave birth, I was 110. So this mm. medication doubled my body weight. Wow. Um, yeah. And then seeing myself after he was born, I was just like unrecognizable. And I just, I looked at myself and all of this inner stuff also came out. And I just thought, I, I'm not this person. I can't be this person. I oh. despise this person. Like, oh. yeah. So it was, um, it was hard. My marriage was falling apart at the time as well. And I had so I nearly lost my son at birth um, to a lung. He had a collapsed lung, so he needed a lot of surgery. Wow. And was in intensive care for two weeks. And I had three kids at home. And I just went into survival mode. And I did what I'd known how to do. And that was just like suppress, suppress, suppress. And let's mm. keep going because my kids need me right now. And my marriage needs me. Um yeah, and I got to a point where I think the weight of 30-odd years was just, it was too much and everything just boiled out. Um, so, yeah. so from there yeah. I sat for a good three years in shadow work and depression and just really starting to dig into my the darker aspects of myself. And I thought that's where I need to start and that's what I need to accept and learn to love because these things are human. We all feel them. Um, and quite frankly, I felt they needed more freaking airtime because I got mm. to a point I was like, we don't share this stuff. And then we sit at home and that's when the anxiety and depression spirals out of control because we think that we're the only ones going through this and yeah. that there is something wrong with us. Mm. Um so, yeah, amidst my darkest hour, I kind of went, I'm done. I'm closing my business down and I'm using my platform now to share my struggles because I do not want another woman feeling the way that I feel in this very moment. Um, and I've done that ever since. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think that's incredible. And and when you talked about being open to show your, your dark side or darker side I, I think so many people are fearful of showing I mean, showing that or even acknowledging that shadow side of their personality and that's when I introduce you because you're very open and that is and acknowledging all those parts of you and you know when I talk sometimes I'll say to clients you know we've all got parts of us and we're not perfect and, um, I, yeah, I freely admit, you know, I could be a bitch. That's inside me. I've got a care inside. I've got all of that. I've got a stubborn side. But I've also, yeah, I can be a bitch. And acknowledging yep. that, mm -hmm. that um, because it, it makes us the whole person. We can't just have yep. that. I don't know. The, the, the not, when I see somebody who's just nice all the time or appears to be nice all the time, I don't believe they are being true to themselves authentic yeah. yeah yeah being authentic and I think we there is a growing up we can't be authentic because especially if we're in an abusive kind of, of yeah if our parents are abusive or they're not connecting with us or we're not getting the love because we crave that so much that we give up being authentic to be attached to them or try and be attached to them. Yeah. And that follows us into our adulthood, doesn't it? So it's absolutely. Yeah. But I think so many people they say, Oh, I don't want to talk talk about this. It's too shaming. It's too embarrassing. Mm -hmm. Well, we've all so many of us have been on that journey, haven't we? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. And like I said, I feel like it definitely needs more airtime because we do have to love ourselves equally. And that includes the lighter parts of ourselves, but also the darker parts. Um, and I'll never forget one day I realized, I was like, you know what? It's okay to love someone so much, but hate them so much at the exact same time. Both feelings are equally as valid and we have to feel them. Like 
Yeah. It's human. We are not going to heal through ignorance. We really need to just allow that stuff to flow, acknowledge it, love it, so we can let it go and grow from it. Because mm. I've learned the hard way what happens when we ignore those darker parts of ourselves in fear of, oh, that's not going to make me a very nice person, or that's going to deter me off my spiritual path, or like whatever reason we are conditioned to believe but it actually does the opposite and it puts us further and further into resistance and that holds as like physical injury or illness within our bodies and mm. it, it has such a spiral effect and that's one of the huge points in my book is I speak about it's a spiritual self-help memoir I guess however when I was going through my um the darkest times I reached out to a few books and I just found I couldn't relate. It was so love and light and positivity. And every page I turned, I went, okay, no, seriously, something's wrong with me because I, ca I can't do this. Like, yeah. so I went, and that's when I kind of went, no, I'm going to write a book. And I'm going to write a book about that's not how it is. Like, it's actually mm. horrible and it's dark and it's painful. And sometimes the healing is worse than the trauma itself. Yeah. But the once you work through that, it is so liberating and empowering. And I never, ever thought if you said to me two years ago that I would be sitting here and saying how much I unconditionally love myself, I would have told you you were crazy. <laughs> but I've gotten to a point now where I'm like, you know what? Yeah, I'm like I can just wholeheartedly honor every single aspect that makes me who I am whilst also accepting that I might not be that person tomorrow or the day after mm. like it's ever evolving it's always changing and we just need to meet ourselves um, in all of the spaces and allow ourselves to be seen and heard regardless of what it comes across as letting go of those connotations I guess that we we do place on emotions and feelings and and spaces within our lives yeah and and I picked up on when you were saying, you know, we have to go to that dark place and you you were reading those books and they were all about positivity and and yeah. so on. And, and I really feel quite strongly about that. All you have to do is to think positive thoughts and everything will be fine. It yeah. really isn't always, you know, you, you can't be that positive. You've got to, you've got to find the darker parts and acknowledge them and grow from those yeah. and if you're just thinking positive I think it can lead to that depression that you went through I've, I've suffered depression in the past and you're just suppressing your feelings and, and pushing them down and they're just eating away at us aren't they inside yeah. and they haven't got a voice but they, no. you need to get it out and and let it go as you said yeah. yeah one of the biggest things that used to get to me was um someone within my life at the time used to say to me step out of victim mode and I used to see that and obviously in a lot of spiritual teaching they, they do the whole thing too you know I was living in victim mode or and I used to feel so horribly about that and be like okay I'm I'm stuck here like I need to just shift my mindset what's wrong with me and then I got to a point where I was like no my victim needs my love right now and I'm just gonna sit her and sit here and allow her to wallow like as long as it takes because she clearly just wants to be heard so she can then feel that love and acceptance and be like okay I'm good now we can go like <laughs> so I hate that I hate the whole yeah, the victim mode mentality or, or words that place us and make us feel like the things that we're experiencing or the things that are coming up for us are wrong or negative or mm. because they're not, we need to, like, we need to sit in those spaces. Mm. And they're all parts of our personality. Yeah. They're all parts of us now or they were in the past or, yeah, they'll, they'll come up and, and I've, I really love acknowledging all the parts of us and um, I sometimes do work. It's, it's kind of like parts therapy and it is, you, you get, 
have a meeting with all your parts and you have an agenda and decide, okay, what's the problem and how, what, it, what is each part feeling? And it could be yeah. the child, it could be the victim, it could be the stubborn, it could be the strong, it could be any other part, you know, and, and you just think, just say, well, how are you feeling? You talk to each part and what do you, what, how, which parts can help the other? Mm. I think it's yeah. really quite um, powerful when you yeah. acknowledge that, okay, that, that little voice, that child within me feels really scared and frightened. And what does she need? Well, yeah. she love and attention. So which part of me can offer that? And it can be the adult, it can be the loving mother figure, whatever else that we yeah. didn't get as that child. Yeah. I do that with my kids now and I'll often say, you know, and where in your body are you feeling it? Like if you'll say, I feel sad, I'm like, okay, and where in your body is feeling sad? And, you know, often I am a firm believer in um, that we have everything within us to to heal ourselves and I truly believe in intention and energy and all the rest of it. So often he'll go, oh, I feel sad in my throat or I feel sad in my tummy. I'm like, okay, well, put your hands there, you know, like let's put our hands there. Let's acknowledge that we're feeling sad in our throat and let's mm-hmm. let's love that space right now or, you know, let's just let them know that they're safe and they're allowed to feel sad. And if we have to cry, let's cry. Like, yeah. but it's those, those spaces that we don't often give ourselves as adults. And I know um, we do all live so, such fast-paced uh, lives. Yeah. So sometimes it's not possible just to stop and cry. I um, actually went for a walk along the beach the other day and I don't even know what came over me, but I instantly went, oh my gosh, I just need to let, like, I'm, I feel like I'm going to cry. And my like human side just went, you're at the beach and everyone is like, you can't just cry. (laughs) And I, so I started to suppress it and I was like, Latoya, just vibe high. Like you just come on, like we can get through this. And I just felt like this really masculine energy, like just start to come over my body. And I felt quite um, unwell. And I I just thought, you know what? Sometimes we do like a lot of people put on that high vibration thing is all love and light too. And I had to sit there and remind myself in that moment, I was like, you crying is actually a beautiful vibration because you are being vulnerable. You are allowing your body to set that free. And who cares? So I sat in the middle of a really busy beach and I just looked out at the ocean and I just sobbed. And no one really even looked twice, but I felt incredible afterwards. And I just thought we really need to let go of this whole mentality that those things are um, like not, you know, negative or that they're embarrassing or socially unacceptable or whatever. Like, um we all feel it yeah <laughs> we all go yeah. through it it just needs more of a voice it does and I think you're you're so right when you talk about suppressing those feelings I can't get angry I can't be I can't be sad I can't cry um it's right now I've got clients who because I can't can't work face to face at the moment but they're they're saying um I'd rather do telephone because I don't want you to see me crying I think, oh, that's so sad because we all yeah. cry and it's a release, as you say, and that's what our, our body's talking to us and trying to suppress all those all the time. It will come out in another form, as you say, and it is it with will. damaging ourselves. Yeah. Um, we, um, we can resist. I I literally did a little spiel on my social Instagram the other day and just said um, our soul contract and our soul path will always remain but it is whether we choose to resist or whether we mm-hmm. surrender which determines the way we get there so yeah. we're going to have to front up and face these things one way or another you can try and suppress it or resist it for as long as you want but it's coming out <laughs> <laughs> it like- does yeah and and I think the sad part is that people don't recognize it and then what happens is that their body will it yeah. will come out physically yeah. and um i don't think people recognize that the illnesses they have are a manifestation of their emotional dis-ease 
Yeah. And I'm using that, not disease, dis-ease. Yeah. And yeah, and they, they just don't connect the two. And yet I've seen it so many times over the years where yeah. people have got a physical illness. When did that start? And it was normally when there was a huge trauma going on in their lives and their yeah. body just manifested in that way. Yeah, yeah, I was the heaviest I've ever been throughout my um, abusive relationship and I did mm. everything. I was working out. I went to the doctor after Bob and got like weight loss medication. I was eating healthy. I I ended up in my darkest time um, oh. starving myself and I was like, what oh. is going on? Like, why am I not losing this weight? Yeah. And once I started to um, heal and delve into self-love, I realized that my body was that far in survival mode. It was hanging on to whatever it could. Because oh, as soon as I let go of my um, husband at the time and I kind of just went, I've got to honor myself now and, and start respecting myself. I can't be in this situation anymore. Within maybe like four weeks, I'd lost 10 kilos. Like it just... Wow. And it was my body just literally saying to me, we're keeping you safe right now. We're surviving and we're just holding on to whatever we can to keep you going. And then as soon as I was able to set things free that, that were causing me all of this trauma and pain, everything within my life just started to flow. I, my work picked up. I finished writing my book and, and sent it out to editing and all the rest of it. I, my physical body, and, and that's not saying that there weren't horribly dark times, but amidst all of this, we, I really started to see so much beauty and incredible Ooh. light within that darkness and those lessons that I'd been through. Um, oh. And hence, yeah, then beauty in the darkness sort of came because I was like, well, like uh, I'm so grateful for everything I went through because without it I don't think I could sit here and say um you know that I I am in a place of unconditional love for myself that I am so thankful that I had experiences like um the relationships and growing up with a narcissistic mom and yeah. you know I, I went through things like being um sexually assaulted and date raped and scenarios like that and every single one of them now I look back and I'm like I'm so thankful that I was put in those situations because of the space that I'm sitting in right now um, oh and God. every single scenario had something really beautiful to teach me gosh it's incredible How, is your book published um is it available? Hopefully soon. Um, so I right, good. So we, people need to keep in touch with you to yes. find out when it's yes. when it's out and published. I'd love to. I'd love to read it certainly. So, yes. yeah. so I share online. I have a blog online which I continue to share um, the things that come up for me and the stuff I'm learning along the way, um, and on social media and things like that. So I'm active on there, and then hopefully. 2021 will be the year that I can I can share that with everybody else I do have a free ebook on my uh, website as well and that's right. all about like intuitive healing and shadow work and rituals and just practices that can support us along the way um because like I said I am a really firm believer in the fact that we don't need to seek anything externally everything is already alive within us we just yeah. need to find those pockets of stillness to allow ourselves to simply be and then Ooh. all of that is just going to find its way to us great and and all your website and co contact details will be on in the show notes anyway so people can find you there what is one thing that you'd like to share with people now that they can take away and you know maybe start working on themselves or yeah um Again, I think it's just simply that, that we don't need to seek anything externally. One of the right. biggest and most beautiful things that I did in order to support myself was I literally just sat in front of the mirror and I just sat there and released all expectations and I just looked within my own eyes and allowed what needed to come up to come up. And I truly believe that we as individuals and souls do 
a lot of our relationships hold a mirror to the things that we really need to um, sit with and work on. So, and that's one of the things I talk about in my ebook as well is mirror work and how to sit there and just hold yourself with love and, and send yourself love. Um, And it's amazing what things will just present themselves to you, whether it be a memory or a word, even a word and, and uh, yeah, just a message that you kind of need to um, delve into a little deeper. Um, but yes, it's that I believe that our soul and our intuition have all of the answers that we need. If we only just, we'd listen. <laughs> exactly. We just need to listen. And, and, and not know. push it aside. We, I think too often we push it aside. Yeah. Um, as and we, we, can said. Go see, we can go see as many healers and um, therapists and whatever as we want however you know we only have the answers and yeah and yes they can help us create spaces to tap into them which is great but ultimately the work is up to us absolutely absolutely yeah. great so um one easy way that people can get in touch with you Latoya so I'm probably um the easiest would be Instagram which my handle is Latoya J. J-A-D-E. So, um, yeah, my Instagram is where I'm most active. And then the website is just latoyajade.com. And that's where my blog is and a lot of updates and videos and podcast links and all the rest of it. Fabulous. I've, I really enjoyed listening to your story today and I hope the listeners have too. It's been a fascinating story and um, how beautiful that you found that love for yourself through all of that. And I think that's amazing. And and definitely some things that many people need to hear much more of. So thank you very much. I hope you've enjoyed this episode. I'd love to hear from you and what you think. So do get in touch. If you'd like to learn more about me, how I help people who are struggling with issues relating to their personal life or relationships, as well as finding out how you can work with me, go to my website, www.wendycapewell.co.uk, where you can find my contact details and book a free call with me. You really don't have to struggle alone. Until next time, take care. Bye.